What up, y'all? This is Dr. Kara here, and I wanted to talk today about a recent study out of UC Berkeley um, on metals found in tampons. Yes, we got to get into it. Um, so this recent study uh, was published in July of 2024, uh, which is the year that I'm talking about it. Um, and um, essentially, researchers within this study found that um, 16 different types of metals were tested, um, and mostly all of them were found in tampons. And there were things like calcium and arsenic and lead and zinc and barium and all dif different types of metals that were found within tampons. Now this is crazy because we've been using tampons for years upon years upon years um, and nobody until now has looked to see that there are certain types of things within tampons which is insane. We're now in 2024 and someone is looking to see that there's levels of mercury or nickel or strontium or selenium within different tampons. Now this research study um, looked at 30 different types of tampons or 30 tampons within 14 different brands. And it was some really interesting findings that they found. Now they found that um, there were varying le levels of metal concentrations within the tampons. They did find that within organic tampons as a whole, that more arsenic was found. And they also found that lead was found more in non-organic tampons. Yeah, so choose your poison. Um, but they're also looking at, you know, organic versus non-organic. They were looking at store versus name brand. They were looking at um, whether it was purchased in the U.S. versus in the um, UE versus UK. Um, so they did use um, a lot of different data points to put this uh, study together. Um, but I still think it's crazy that we are finding metals within tampons. They also found that there was a lot of tampons, actually when I read the study from front to back, um, that zinc and calcium were used a lot. And it was used a lot for mainly like the, the casing of the tampon to help with it getting in and out more easily. That helps with kind of lubrication. It uh, helps with, um, removing odors. Um, so there are some, I guess, some type of benefits. And when I was doing a, a deeper dive into the research, um, um, there are different metals that are used for different things. Um, so like I said, lubrication, you know, to get the tampon in easy and out without uh, it being super dry. Um, so yes, it, I guess, can be a little bit helpful. But Things like lead and arsenic should not be used within tampons. So let me kind of step back and give you a little bit more information about tampons. So tampons have been used or are used by about 80% of women who menstruate around the world. And the average menstruator uses about 11,000 different products within their life. And if it's a mainly a tampon user, they're using 11,000 tampons in their lifetime. And tampons are essentially made up of cotton, right? Or that's what we think. Um, in doing research, it's not just made up of cotton, but sometimes they put this... Um, um, material called rayon in it also. Um, and I think that kind of helps with uh, the absorption of blood um, and it helps with kind of keeping um, um, odor down. Um, and then also they sometimes bleach the cotton to help it look really white. Um, and so with that, with bleaching of the cotton, um, there is a byproduct that's made with bleaching with chlorine, um, and that is called dioxin. 
And so dioxin has been studied in the past um, and is considered a endocrine um, a dysregulator. Um, it can essentially affect the hormones in your body. Um, so it's a harmful chemical um, that can accumulate in someone's body if they use it over time. Um, so just l stay until the end because I do want to give some tips and tricks um, about what you can do to look um, at the product and see if it's a good product for you. Um, and like I said, so dioxins are known to be endocrine disruptors, so they can affect your um, hormone levels, um, they can interfere with a lot of different things, they can, they can affect reproductive health, they can uh, affect a lot of things within the body. Um, uh, I wanted to touch on the point of lead. So we talked about, um, I talked about the study, I talked about lead being a lot in uh, the non-organic tampons. And lead has um, a, a bad response in our body also. Uh, lead is a chemical um, that can be found in, in the environment and in a lot of different areas. Um, uh, for a while it was used in paint um, and until I think the 50s or 60s um, when it was discovered that lead uh, can lead to a lot of health implications for children, for adults, for anybody. There's no uh, safe level of lead that is in our body, that can be in our body. Um, Lead can be used for um, uh, different things, but again, lead is not, um, it's toxic. Lead is toxic in our bodies. It can affect every organ system in our body. So our brains, uh, our blood, red blood cells, our um, a number of things, our liver, our kidneys. Um, so it essentially can affect everything in the body. And the reason why lead does that is because it kind of mimics calcium in our body. And so if it mimics calcium, calcium is also extremely important for our heart function, for our cellular function. Um, and so if lead is um, uh, taking the place of calcium, um, then it can affect a lot of things within the body, uh, which is the reason why lead is not good. Um, arsenic is also not a good thing, but when I was doing my research, arsenic can also be found in different food products like rice and um, um, processed foods and um, a number of things. So um, arsenic is not a good thing as well. Um, and the reason why um, lead or lead and these other metals that were researched in this study out of Berkeley, um, the reason why metals are um, or can affect us as women or vulva owners or vagina owners um, is because of this. The vagina is a very absorbent organ of the body. Um, the vaginal epithelium or the lining of the vagina um, is highly vascular. Um, it has a lot of um, um, blood vessels in the area that can help with absorbing things. So um, there's some products that are used to be put within the vagina and can be um, absorbed systemically or all throughout our body. Um, so imagine putting a tampon in and essentially absorbing everything that all the products that all of the chemicals and things that are within this tampon, um, which is the implication, which is the reason why um, more research needs to be done on tampons and its effects on the body. Um, so uh, I talked about the vagina. I talked about... Um, um, our level of absorption of things within the, the vagina. Um, the thing that also can, um, the reason why it is important um, to know what is going into tampons is that there's different irritants that can affect the vagina also and the vaginal flora or all the good and the not so good or essentially the good bacteria um, 
within our vaginas. Um, and so if a certain irritant um, or a certain product um, gets within the vagina, it can cause some irritation. Um, it can affect the flora of the vagina and it can cause infection. So things like BV, bacterial vaginosis, yeast, um, um, replicate when they're the vaginal when the vagina um, is not at a certain ph balance um, so that's why ph balance is so big for women um, is because our vaginas need to be at a certain ph and if there are certain products that come into the vagina that affect the ph then that leads to that can lead to different infections um so what to do because this is a lot of information about these tampons that we have been using for so long to put in our bodies. Um, so what essentially can be done for us? Well, there are some solutions. There's some solutions, okay? So um, one of the solutions is you can use a menstrual cup. Menstrual cups, um, are essentially medical uh, grade silicone that you um, that is essentially made into a cup um, and you can put into the vagina um, and I personally use it I think it is a great product um, I'm not saying any of them in particular because I'm not being paid by any of them um, but I do highly recommend diva cups or uh, menstrual cups also, when doing research, I found that there is some disadvantages to doing menstrual cups. And one of those disadvantages are PFAS. So what is PFAS? Um, so PFAS is a chemical. It's essentially human-made. Um, and it is a surfactant. So it helps with repelling uh, oils and um, water. Um, and so it's used in so many different things. It's used in rugs, it's used in textiles, it's used in um, um, fast food uh, packaging, it's used in uh, a number of things. And supposedly it's also used in menstrual cups. Um, other things that can be used besides tampons are pads, good old pads. Um, I think the, the reason why pads can be a safe alternative, it is not going into the vagina. It's not going in as far. And again, like I said, there is that vaginal epithelium that is able to absorb a lot of things and it's highly permeable. Um, so if you are just having a pad um, that is on the vulva and essentially not inside the vagina, um, it is less risk of you absorbing uh, the chemicals um, that make the pad into your body. So I would say pads are a good option. You know, sometimes they feel like diapers, but to each their own. Um... So menstrual cups can be used, um, pads are a safe alternative, and then, you know, the the big thing now are uh, menstrual underwear, you know, like these super absorbent underwear um, that can be used, but there are some issues with that, and I think that there's essentially issues with everything. There's pros and cons to a lot of things, and you essentially have to weigh the pros and cons, um, but uh, certain brands like Thinks, um, I think that there was a class action lawsuit against them uh, back in 2022, I believe, um, because they said that they had, you know, uh, they were free of chemicals, that they were um, um, safe to use uh, for the environment. Um, and these uh, Thinks, um, uh, when someone did some research into what it's made of, did also contain PFAS, which I told you is that surfactant. It's a forever chemical. It lasts in the environment forever. Um, and so, yeah. So these period underwear, also you should look pretty close to see, if, you know, what's in the ingredient um, or what is it made of. Um, so... Again, to each their own, um, you gotta do some research before using these. Um, yeah, before using these products. 
Um, some overall uh, advice that I would recommend as a doctor, as a board certified internal medicine doctor, um, I would recommend that you use, uh, that you look at the label, that you actually look at the label and see what uh, the ingredients are. And what I can say, if you look at the ingredients and you see titanium dioxide and you see all of these other uh, ingredients that you can't pronounce, then it probably is not the best in your body. Um, so things like phthalates, um, things like parabens, uh, things like bleach um, or chlorine um, that are used to help um, make the tampon what it is, I would definitely recommend against those. Um, and I will put some information down below um, of what I uh, recommend and some things, some general tips on what to, to watch out for. Um, I am also in a, another video uh, going to say what I strongly recommend in terms of actual products. Now this study that I am referring to, um, the one out of UC Berkeley, the public health school, um, um, did not say what brands had more chemicals in them or more metals in them. Um, I don't know if it was a strategy or, or what. They didn't want to call out certain people. Maybe they would get lawsuits. I don't know. Um, I think it would be really helpful for them to put out that information and say what uh, brands that they studied and what tampons were studied and what had the most metals found in it. Um, but the other question is, from the doctor's standpoint, so we find these metals. Like I said earlier, lead is not good for the body. There's no safe uh, level of lead in the body. The study did not talk about specifically about what they recommend and what they don't recommend, but personally as a doctor with knowledge and information, um, I would say not to use the non-organic tampons. So yes, essentially looking at the tampon that you have already and seeing if it is a good product for you. Maybe you have to throw it out. Maybe it's not good. Um, so stay tuned because in the next video, I am going to talk about what I would recommend, um, the specific brands I would recommend to uh, buy, to purchase for you and your vagina. Stay tuned. Bye.